What's up YouTube? So today I want to look at creating some nighttime high tech type of uh, crazy random leads. And so first I want to start off by saying that this is not my forte. I generally make like full on and that kind of stuff. So there might be a couple of things that, you know, might differ in your style of music. Um, but that being said is there's quite a few techniques that I've picked up from a few sort of high tech and nighttime producers in my years of like watching them produce and doing collaborations and stuff like that. Um, a couple of tricks that I think might help you guys to create better crazy nighttime leads and effects and that kind of stuff. So yeah, let's dive in and have a look. So the kind of core idea behind uh, what I'm going to explain in this video is to kind of create your own patch and record it while you play it over, you know, several bars, maybe the entire track. And, you know, then cherry pick the best parts out of that and loop and chop those up and stuff like that. And the reason I'm using Faceplant is it's incredibly diverse in how you can create your sounds. You know, there's kind of no barriers in terms of, you know, how to root things. So specifically for these kind of more crazy psychedelic sounds, um, it's a very good option because, you know, you can set macros and all sorts of modulators to do you know so many different things that you could like hit space and let it play randomly and record a bunch of stuff and then cherry pick those or you can assign a bunch of macros and play the patch while you're recording it so what i want to do here is i want to recreate a, a patch that i made um that kind of shows off a particular effect uh in the killer hearts arsenal and that's called the frequency shifter and this is very cool for these kind of like very randomized psychedelic sounds because you can pretty much feed any audio source into that and create these weird effects. So I want to show you the power of this quickly using a random. So let's set this to like 4 over 16 and then something like this. So of course there's no audio coming in here yet. So we can actually just put on an analog and that's now sending to the frequency shifter. So of course you could do this with samples as well, you know, you're not limited to obviously the analog. Uh, let's just throw a sampler in there quickly. So just that one effect, you can make some pretty wild sounds and you know, the cool thing about this is you can record it out like bars of those randoms and just chop out like, you know, quick segments which sound good and then apply effects on those and stuff like that. And it's a cool way of creating these very kind of unexpected uh, twists and effects for your tracks. I just want to set this uh, down an octave. That already sounds a bit better. So what we can do is we can also create a couple of other, you know, variations which we can play with with macros and that kind of stuff. So here what I want to do is I want to set this macro to control the side chain of this frequency shifter. So we can just click the plus of the macro and then click this little star over here and then click this plus. So now what this does is this macro is kind of like an on-off switch for that frequency shifter or more like actually an amount for that frequency shifter. So you can create some pretty interesting effects with that. Um, so here, let's call this frequency because we're going to set quite a few macros here to play with. So it helps to name them accordingly. So here, what I want to do is I actually want to create another oscillator and we're going to use this one to modulate the first one over here. So let's set this down two octaves, one below the original, and let's set this audio output to phase modulate. I find that's a little bit 
easier to work with than FM in terms of like pitch and that kind of stuff. Awesome sound. So here also what I like to do is to set a, another macro to control the side chain of this phase modulation. So I don't know if you noticed, I didn't go all the way to 100%. I didn't want that like extreme grittiness, just like underneath that, like 78%, just to give it that kind of texture, but not overdoing the amount of phase modulation. But now we can always just uh, mix it in with this. So here what I want to do now is I want to create an LFO, just a sine wave, something like this. Um, let's turn the frequency down quite a bit. And we're going to set this to control the pitch of this guy over here. But we also want to set another macro to control the side chain of that. Um, because we don't want it controlling the pitch all the time. We're going to want like, you know, during the bar, we're going to want it at like a stable pitch. And then maybe at the end of each bar or just like a flourish in between the bars, we can like turn the macro up, have it do a crazy thing and then turn it back down again. You know, just creating these kind of patches which you can play with to create variations, you know, as you, as you play the track. Uh, and then let's assign this one to, to that. So now... Fantastic. Um, so now here, the trick is, I like to create another random, and then we'll set this to like something a bit slower. And we'll set this to control the speed of this LFO. So now it's going to kind of give us random speeds of that LFO. It's not always going to be like that. And that's going to create these kind of like almost psychedelic kind of patterns. And here we want to turn this retrigger off because we're going to be uh, inputting it with like a gated MIDI pattern. And I find it helps to set this to unipolar. So it's only speeding up the pitch. It's not going kind of below this hertz that we set over here. Awesome, that's sounding good. So, in terms of effects on the actual patch, I like to leave it pretty bare because we're gonna be bouncing out a long section of the audio and then we're gonna wanna apply reverbs and delays and stuff like that to the actual processed audio. So here, I don't like to apply any kind of like time-based effects, um, except what I find really does help with this kind of stuff is this effect called Haas. It's kind of just like a stereo spread kind of effect or more like a duplicate effect, where it duplicates the one channel and delays it ever so slightly to give you a much kind of fatter stereo sound. For these, you know, simple waveform but crazy sounds, you know, they're very singular, but they're taking up a lot of space in the track. Something like Haas can really help to, you know, widen that sound. Awesome. So what I want to do here quickly is let's get through part one of this. Um, so we've created our kind of basic patch, which we're going to use to create a variety of sounds from. And the easiest way to go about recording, you know, this sound live as audio in Cubase is to actually create a group. 
Uh, so let me open up my mixer quickly. It's to create a group and then send the audio from that group into a new audio track. So let's go add group channels to selected track. Let's call this record group. And then we can add a new audio track. And we can set the input of this audio track here to record group. You might have to click this channel because we're going to open this plugin up. And what Cubase does is it automatically selects the channel that you're opening the plugin of. So I find it helps to select the actual channel, that, like the track, and then record arm the audio track and unrecord arm the MIDI track because we don't want to record any like MIDI or anything into this channel. Um, just for a quick reference, it's a very simple MIDI pattern, uh, just like 16ths all the way through, a couple of breaks here and there. But the idea is we're not going to keep this sequence as it is. We're going to be chopping it you know, quite a lot. So I just did a couple of different varieties to get these kind of rhythmic differences. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Let's go ahead and hit record over here. And I'm going to open up the patch and just play with those macros and see what see what we come up with. Awesome. So we got a nice long chunk of crazy synths to chop up. And what I want to do now quickly is show you guys how to quickly make a cool variation on that. Um, so here I actually want to just duplicate this, delete what's on it, just so I can record straight into this new channel. So here what I want to do is let's actually just turn this frequency shift. Oh, no, we don't have to because we can just not modulate it, I guess. Um, so this pitch LFO here, I actually want to change this so that it's on a filter. So let's put this filter over here and change it to a band pass and then set this to modulate the cutoff. So then we can just play around with the slope and the Q over here to get some interesting effects. But essentially we're creating a randomized filter effect here. And we'll choose, you know, which setting on the PMOD sounds the best. I want to put some slight distortion before the filter. I think that could liven it up a bit. So then this one, we don't actually have to play. We can just record out a segment of this. Um, because it's kind of got that randomized pitch stuff, you can play that phase modulation if you want. Um, but I just like to bounce out a long segment of this kind of thing. 
and then chop it up and put uh, effects and stuff on there. That's enough for demonstration purposes. So then the idea here, um, actually this last little one here is pretty cool. Let me not chop that one. I liked how it went like down like that. Anyway, so then the idea here is to find the best parts of this little, these little loops that you've made and arrange them sensibly or non-sensibly, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Uh, so let's just chop this little bit out here. And this mute tool and the scissor tool are going to be your best friends in this type of thing. So actually, let me just go ahead and put a delay on here.
big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. Awesome. I'm sure you guys get the picture. I'm going to be posting this uh, preset that I made in Faceplant to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters so you guys can make these kind of random sounds if you want. But yeah, it's not very hard to create this in pretty much any type of VST that you're comfortable with. You know, the, the trick is to just create a bunch of macros and play with them while you're recording it. And then cherry pick the best parts. So yeah, hope that helped you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.